This is a Sea Ray 265 Sundancer. Now people often refer to these as pocket cruisers because it gives you a little proper sports cruiser boat but in a very compact shape. And it's surprising what they get into these. It's about 26 foot long but it's actually got pretty good accommodation. I'm going to start on the outside first of all. What they've done and how they get good accommodation is you'll see there's no side decks on it at all. They've brought the cabin and the cockpit right out to the edge. So if you want to get up here on the foredeck, there's steps that come up. That centre section of windscreen opens. You can see the canopy as well splits on both sides. That rolls up and that's how you get up on the bow. You've got electric anchor winch up here as well and the anchor there then on the front. And very smart as well with this grey hull. That looks really good. There's a radar arch on this one, that's that fellow there. And then the canopies just slide into it. So you can see these grooves here, what they call luff grooves. So the canopy just slides in through there, clip it on around there, and that's in place. So that works well. And what you can do with this is you can take these side pieces out, leave the top on, and that gives you a bimini top then for a bit of shade if you want it. If we come right on around the back, there's a couple of neat features on here. The one I particularly like actually is the fact that almost all boats have got a boarding ladder this doesn't, this has a, what they call a swim step. So what you've got is rather than just a thin metal ladder, this whole section here opens up like that, drops over into the water, and that creates a step under the water to step up out, in or out of the water. I think that's a great idea. It's just a lot more comfortable and easier to use. I've not actually seen that before, and I'm surprised it's not more common. There's a deck shower, and that is tucked away in there when you come out from swimming. And then we've got the cockpit just here. So this is what I'm talking about with the canopy. This, or these sections of canopy here can come out and then you can just leave the top up or you can put a section into here and then if you can see the zip there and enclose this whole cockpit area. So it just depends how you're using the boat, what the weather's doing, of course. You've got this nice area here for dining or just relaxing. That will fold out to double the size. So if you are eating, you've got a lot more space. But it's actually very adaptable because there's a few things you can do here. The first is this little lever down here. If I pull that and give that a bit of a push, that drops down flat to make sunbathing. But in actual fact, what you can do with this is then open that table out and drop that one down as well. It's on a telescopic leg. And you see those little bars there and there. That then rests on those. You put a cushion on there and that makes sunbathing right the way across. So you've got really good full length sunbathing. That'd be a great place to relax. You could sit back here, you could have your head up against here, look back out across the water. That'd be fantastic. Let's lift that one back up. Have to release the catch first, hang on. There we go. Transom door here, so this closes off. Just have to lift it and turn it, hang on. There we go, like so. And then things like battery switches so are easy to reach there inside here. There we go. And some of the circuit breakers are there as well. That's this radar arch on the inside. And again, it's got the same system with these canopies just sliding into these left grooves. It does make life a lot easier. We've got this seat here where Maggie's taking it easy. That's a lovely place to relax because you can sit with your back against there and your feet out. But what this also does, it gives you a bit more headroom into the mid cabin, which we'll see in a moment when we look inside. And then a double helm station here. There's lift bolsters on these so you can sit or you can stand, depending on your preference. And then across here, steering, of course, the uh, engine throttle control. We've got trim tabs on this one. We've got the windlass buttons here, bilge pump wipers, all the usual sorts of stuff is across here. Lighting, so anchor lights, courtesy lights, running lights, all that kind of stuff. Twin Simrad screens on this one, which is nice. And there's a bow thruster on here as well, which is very, very helpful. This is the door that I was mentioning. You can see these little clips here, so you can unclip those, zip the canopy up. And to actually get up there then, this door here, if we unclip it first, We'll slide across, clip into place, and now you've got an easy steps up and out through the windscreen. Very good. Let's drop that one back. Clip it back so it doesn't slide around. There we go. So that is the cockpit. Let's go and have a little look inside. Fusion stereo there, incidentally. Was, that's what that little fella is. And down here is the interior. Now the first thing to mention is 
that, when you get right down into here, the headroom at this end is pretty good. I'm just over six foot and I've got easy standing headroom here. Now it does drop as you go forward because you can obviously imagine that the roof slopes down, but also the hull is a V hull that's coming up like this. So you don't have the standing headroom here, but neither do you need it because you've got seating all the way around here. That's really a seating space, not a standing and chatting space. This table will drop down and that then makes into an infill and there's cushions that go on there and that makes into a double bed, but it's not the only sleeping area on the boat. We've got skylights in the ceiling up here. We've also got an opening hatch, but the um, sunbathing cushions that we saw on the foredecker there at the minute, so there's no light coming through there. We do have the side windows as well. There's one here and another one like so. Back here is the galley. It's electric cooking on this one. There's no gas. There is um, microwave, just <laughs> microwave. <laughs> I'll edit that out later. There's a sink there and there is a microwave. See, I'm thinking ahead all the time. And that is just there. Switch panels here as well. So your 12 volt switching and your 220 volt switching. So 220 volt is things like the microwave and the water heater and the battery chargers. So that's when you're plugged into shore power. 12 volts is your ship stuff. So the stuff that runs off the batteries, the cabin lights, the fresh water pump, stereo system and the refrigerator. And you're gonna say, well, hang on, didn't you have a refrigerator a minute ago? Uh, and we did. The reason for that is it's dual voltage. You can run it off of either. What they do is when you're plugged into the shore power, you run it off the 220 volt. When you unplug the shore power, you run it off of 12 volt. Fusion stereo, which I'm going to turn down because I can hear it whispering in the background. There we go. Um, and then there's a fridge here as well, of course. That's down underneath. Like so. Got the milk in there, ready for a cup of tea. And then this is the mid cabin. So that seat there, I mentioned, gave you a bit of extra headroom, is this bit of headroom here. Curtains off. That's what this little trap here is for. And what that is, is a double bed. It is a bit full of stuff at the minute, but you get the idea. The double bed that runs right the way across down underneath there. I mean, it is compact. The whole boat is compact, but that's exactly the point of it. And it comes back to what I'm saying right at the beginning. It is a pocket cruiser. It's designed to offer you an awful lot in a pretty small space. I think it does it well. Last thing to show you then is the toilet, or last thing down here at least, and that is in here. So it's a vacuum flush toilet and there's a shower that pulls out of there. I'm dripping slightly. There we go. And a mirror. <laughs> Brilliant. Translucent door for a little bit of light into there. Obviously it's got the window there as well. So that's that. Last thing to talk about then is the engine. So, put my shoes back on and I'll see if I can open this for you. I've not tried it yet, but I believe that if I flip that catch there and that one there, put a little bit of weight on it while I turn it. There we go. Hey, hey, look at that. That was easier than I was expecting. And there we go. That is a 6.2 litre, 350 horsepower engine. That's quite an upgrade. They do, I think, three engine options. The smallest is a 4.5 litre. This, though, is the one you want to give you sort of 30 knots plus performance, mid 20 knot cruising. Don't know the range. A couple hundred miles is typical. Um, but yeah, that is just your good old V8 high capacity engine, isn't it? Petrol engine, nice and smooth nice and powerful flat out with that i would imagine got to be up towards the mid 30s isn't it that's be quite a quick boat i should think and then you've got obviously things like bilge pumps are in here batteries are in here down there um hydraulic pump for the power trim and we've got tankage in here as well as you can see that one's the fresh water tank so there we go as I say, very much the pocket cruiser, but it is surprising what they get into these. Let's drop that back down. Do you know, you see all of these with these power hatches and the power hatches are cool, but you know, when it's as easy as that, it does make you wonder why you bother. <laughs> That's really simple. And they've weighted it really well. Fantastic. I think we've just about covered it. I'm gonna sit here at the helm. Let's drop these bolsters down. Make it a little bit more comfortable. And I'm going to say massive thanks to Marina Marbella for organising that tour. I'll put a link to those guys in the description. Huge thanks to you all for watching. 
Let me know what you think of that one, and we will catch you on one of these real soon. Take care. Bye-bye.